Hello everyone. Today we're going to get started on creating a simple Mindflyer bot. This tutorial hopes to introduce you to the basics of starting with using Mindflyer as well as understanding the basic API and usage of events and callbacks. This bot will look at the nearest player if a player is nearby. It should be pretty easy to set up. So let's get started by creating a new NPM package. This tutorial does assume you know how to use node.js as well as having working a code editor installed. For npm, I'm just going to create a basic package with all default settings. Here's our package.js or JSON. Let's install Mindflayer using npm. Running npm and install Mindflayer will ensure you get the latest version and set up all of the libraries and everything for you. So oh, this process should take a few seconds depending on your internet speed. All right. After your package is installed, you're going to want to create a new index.js file. This is where you'll be putting all your bot code. Using Mindflayer, you start by importing the Mindflayer library. You, in JavaScript, running the require command will load the library and save that library to this variable. This is how we'll be using Mindflayer to create our bot. You can actually create a bot by running mindflayer.createBot directly on the library. Now, a Mindflayer bot is basically a modified Minecraft client. It will tell the server that it is a Minecraft client even though it's really not. This allows us to pre pretend that we're running a player and the server can't tell the difference. Now, the server I'm going to be looking at today is just going to be a standard LAN server. I'm going to turn on cheats so I can use teleport if I need to. Um, and our port server is open. Now, when you're creating the bot, you're going to need to specify the server you want to log into. Bots do need to log into a server, otherwise they're not very, they don't really do anything. So, so we're going to put in our server login information. Since this is my computer, the server IP is localhost, and the port is, well, 37269. Okay. For most servers, they will use the default port, and specifying port here isn't necessary for the stand, as the standard port is always 25565 for a normal server. Since we're using land, port is required. This depends on the server you're logging into. We're also going to specify the name of the bot we want to log in with. In this case, we want to log in with the username to look at bot. Specifying this here only works on cracked servers or LAN worlds. If you're trying to log into a regular server, you will need to put the account information for the account the player will be the bot will be logging in with. As I said, a player, it, my player is basically a modified vanilla client, so you will, you will need to specify the account information for logging into official worlds. If you are using an account, you can put the password here, but so we're going to put the password there, but we are not going to be using a password since this is a LAN world. Now, if we run this command or run this file, we can switch over to Minecraft and see our bot has joined the game. It's not doing anything, but it is in the game. And the server can see it and is waiting for it to move. <laughs> All right. Let's make it do some stuff. To get started, we are going to make a new event. In Mindflare, if you use the dot on function, it basically listens for a certain event to occur. In this case, we're going to listen for the physics tick event, which is basically an event that is called every Minecraft tick, or 20 times per second. This is, allows us to specify some code which will run you know, every tick, and this was how we'll look at the player. We'll need to specify what code we want to run. So let's create a nearest. Uh, 
function called look at nearest player. And we'll pass that function into the event parameters. There. Can't type today, apparently. So what will happen is we will pass this function into the listener for the on physics tick event, which means that this function will be called 20 times per second. We're going to start by getting the nearest player to the bot. The nearest entity function is a bot is a Mindflare API, which will basically return whatever entity is closest to the bot. We want to specifically look for players, uh, so we're going to have to specify a filter. This nearest entity function will take in a filter, which basically allows you to specify what type of entity you're looking for. It will basically check, it'll run the function every for every entity. If it returns true, it will that entity will be considered in the function. If it returns false, it'll be ignored. So we're going to write a simple filter, which checks for that entity. Now, I'm going to be using a lambda function for this to save some space. And pass that function into you. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with JavaScript, using arrow notation is a basically simplified way of writing the entire function right here. It's a little bit different in scope, but that doesn't really apply, but that's out of the scope of this video. Essentially what we're doing is creating a new function that takes entity in as a parameter and check and returns true if the type of entity is a player and returns false if it's not a player. By passing that function into the nearest entity function, what will happen is we'll search through all entities that are players and get the nearest one. One effect of this is if there is no players nearby, that will be false. So we're going to just specify to do nothing if no player is nearby. Now, assuming there is a player nearby, we're going to get the position of that player. All right. And what we can do is run bot.look at that position. Now, if we switch back over to Minecraft, whoops. I made a typo somewhere. Oh, I spelled filter wrong apparently. There we go. Sorry about that. There. Now, every take the bot will be looking at me. As you notice, it's looking at my feet for some reason. This is because in my Minecraft, an entity position is defined by its feet. You can actually see this. If you hit F3, you notice my it's a, you'll see my XYZ position is actually the location of my feet, or four in this case. So since we want to actually look at the player's head, we can offset this position. By adding the height of the entity to its position. So we're going to take the position of the entity, offset the XYZ world coordinates. Ignore, do nothing to X and Z, but add the player height to their Y position. So now pose represents the position of my head. If we run this bot again. It's now looking at my head. And as long as I'm nearby, it'll continue following me every frame. All right. So. Hopefully that will introduce a lot of you to the basics of getting started with creating a bot using Mindflare. Thank you all for stopping by and have a wonderful day.